Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the following Q&A will um, happen as part of the Documentary Mondays project, which is organized by Czech Centers in cooperation with Institute of Documentary Films. Uh, my name is Ivana Formanova, and I am the manager of Kinedoc, which is uh, the alternative distribution of documentary films. And now I have the great pleasure to welcome here a director of film titles such as Strip or Why Do I Feel Like a Boy, or the film that we are going to discuss today, Illusion. Uh, her name is Katerina Trečkova, and I would like to welcome her here. Hi, Ka Hi Kačka. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation. I'm really happy to be here. Unfortunately, online, but it can be great because so many people who can't go to the cinema, they can see it now. It's an amazing opportunity. Great. Um, thank you. Thank you for the film. Um, I wanted to thank you, first of all, for making this very sophisticated uh, simulation of a video game. Uh, your film is uh, about the life in the Hungarian political regime in the, uh, in the illiberal democracy, let's say. And you made it while you were studying there over the course of one year. Uh, do you remember what was going on through your mind while when you first uh, remembered when you first uh, decided to make this film? Right, that's very hard because it's few years ago. But I think yeah, that was yeah, it was like I came from Czech Republic to Hungary to study film. And first day when I came to the film school where I supposed to study, uh, they told me they don't have any, any uh, teaching schedule, any, any studying schedule for me. Mm -hmm. And I was just so surprised like, what is happening here? Like, just, we were like, we had a huge discussion through the emails we were calling, we have some calls and what is happening now? And I just found, that was something what was happening everywhere. Like everything was for me very strange. Everything was some kind of destroyed. Like I couldn't really handle the whole society, like what I will do there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was trying to went to the school and do everything what I could. And, uh, and I was like, yeah, what I will do. And all the time I felt something is wrong there. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment, like, yeah, how I will deal with the whole situation What is like, for me, that was absolutely clear. It's connect with the whole society situation, political, culture, society, social situation in the whole, in the whole Hungary. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything what I knew and what I can do, it's filming. Right. That was the moment. <laughs> But very interesting was, I was like, yeah, I will make film about the Hungarian regime, about the people. And I didn't know how to do it because I didn't want to show people's faces. I didn't want to mm -hmm. show their identity because I felt it's, there is the huge like disgrace or shame, mm -hmm. like really shame to be loud. Something is wrong here. Mm -hmm. because the society was still like no, no nothing is happening here like it's absolutely okay you know it's like right. it is it is like this what we can feel now with the corona virus here you know like everybody are like oh this is so wrong but it's happening like yeah. it's it's weird but it's happening and it was pretty same feelings i i suppose and uh, and i didn't know how to do it but in the one like it was just moment and i'm not sure why and how sometimes this is like the art moment you know something happened in my yeah. mind and i was like wow i will do it like a game <laughs> and that was it and do you have a special connection to video games do you play them yourselves or how do you um how do you perceive this media oh that's very interesting because i i played when i was a kid of course like everybody and i was scared of games because I felt it's very powerful and uh, I, I think I was addict in some time mm -hmm. to play like I don't know Counter Strike it's true and Call of Duty too <laughs> but I was every time very interested of the video games because it's the medium like mm -hmm. it's something very different and uh, my best friend he is gamer and he loves game and he is too one of the uh person who is lead, like who is in 
who made this like uh, I don't know how to say who made this department on uh, film school about the gaming and he's really and I was every time just listening to him and I understand of the medium um, in the art way and after that I didn't play the game I was just watching how somebody's playing the game and it's why I wanted to make a game that way like I didn't need to play it because mm -hmm. when you watch the film you don't feel like you don't have this experience of the playing the game you are just right. watching somebody there is the official uh, name of that that's let's play videos when somebody's just watching the films and it's still very huge platform it's biggest it's bigger than the netflix mm -hmm. because like on the twitch there are more mm -hmm. people are watching somebody's playing game than the more than the people are watching netflix today it's still happening and i just felt wow i can just like and it's cool because like you can show the how somebody's playing the game is this the illusion like somebody's playing the game it's a whole illusion mm -hmm. and um who was playing the game it was me with the other people who i asked to be part of the film and it was pretty cool for me too because the game was like it was the excuse for everything mm -hmm. i don't need to show any, any person that's amazing i don't mm -hmm. need to show any identity that's amazing i can use there's so many artistic forms and to show how somebody is feeling. I can, I can use uh, different types of the music and make mm -hmm. these feelings, the official like artistic feelings. And that was just, yeah, that was the thing. I was just watching when somebody, mm -hmm. somebody playing the game yeah. and I was interested and used it, used yeah. the uh you yeah i use the how to say it i use the yeah i do use the feelings what i felt when i was watching somebody mm -hmm. that's great um in the film you also work with uh personal stories of locals who are often discontent about the situation in hungary or have some kind of conflict with the political regime so um how did you research the protagonists and uh, was it hard to find people who were willing to share their experiences Oh, that was the hardest <laughs> because uh, I was trying to learn uh, Hungarian. It was really hard and I didn't make it because I'm really bad at this graphic and uh, dyslectic and it's like languages are really hard for me. But I learned to listen the sound of the Hungarian and I felt how they how they feel in some things and uh, and I didn't have the tools and what I did was I just I just did everything what you can do like wrote, I wrote on the Facebook I was walking around the city asking people mm -hmm. I had some trips outside of the Budapest and asking the people what is happening in their minds how they feel and of course I was just studying Hungary history Hungary politics I was going every day, I, I went every day, like I was going every day to the libraries and I was just reading and trying to understand what is happening there. Because I think like there, there, there are so many situations when probably, I don't know, in, I don't know where somebody is watching us, I don't in Bucharest, somebody mm -hmm. who watched the film, maybe he feel, oh my God, it's happening to me too. Mm -hmm. And that was the thing, like it's so many situations who are, like normal for so many people mm -hmm. i think today in coronavirus situation we feel so many times we are betrayed by the system we are betrayed by the society and uh, yeah i used everything like facebook tinder that was very great because i met so many women who had families i asked mm -hmm. the families and that was like i was just trying to find people who came out with the with the some problematic situation with the mm -hmm. uh, with the state and yeah i used everything really and um what um how did you decide it, who made it to the final cut what stories made it to the final cut wow well, you know it's like you have so many things what you are doing and the final decision is every time it is in editing room mm -hmm. like you still need to think about the film it's the whole piece like sometimes you 
I had so many times these moments when I really loved some, I don't know, some picture or some sound, but it's not connected with the whole piece. Mm-hmm. And that was, that, that's the main thing, you know. But I had really huge problem to reach people who have problems with the system, mainly because they don't feel it's the problem. They right. felt, they thought it's normal mm-hmm. because they already living in this um, crazy situation. And especially Hungarians, when they are really connect in their history, how they teach the history in the schools with some, you know, the whole feeling, main feeling, I think it's the betrayal. Mm-hmm. And they don't see themselves it's so wrong and of course because of the huge propaganda and it's not just uh, this online propaganda on the facebook and in the television because there is a huge monopoly of the television and medias are under the state but it was because of the huge advertising too like when you go outside from the house you just can see these billboards with the state information Mm -hmm. and you just can't really hide. And when you can imagine you will fight with something, it's very hard because you don't have any base, what is good, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. And you feel just so weird and you just feel shamed, you know? That's Mm -hmm. the really interesting for me. We have amazing word for it in Czech, which is hamba. You know mm-hmm. how is it like you 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 like English you you studied shame. English shame. yeah it's shame yeah it's, shame, but it's yeah. more like <laughs> when you feel shame because of the culture and social yeah like standards mm-hmm. and yeah it's really hard and of course like the system by Orban changed so many things what people really needed in mm-hmm. two t- two thousand eight and two thousand nine because you know. We, everybody was struggle with this huge economic problem mm-hmm. after the after the banks were dropped in New York and da 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 and that's really interesting like they have proof like they live better mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean it's still not against of the human rights it's not against of the rights what you must have because you are human being. Yeah part of European Union now, come on. Right. So after you found your uh, protagonists or people who were willing to talk to you about their experiences, uh, was it still difficult to gain their trust for the film? Uh, Were there some of them who didn't want to be included in in, in the film after all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some who Mm. didn't want to be included. I had really problem with uh, uh, to have women in Mm -hmm. film. That was really hard and it nearly didn't happen and it was really hard and i think it was because uh hungary it's very uh patriarchy system too it's really based of uh, of these like traditional roles uh of gender roles what we have in the society and it's really hard like women didn't want to talk with me and and I had some uh, some other people who didn't want to talk with me because, like, they didn't feel uh, it means something because mm-hmm. I'm just a student from Czech Republic mm-hmm. making film. Mm-hmm. They thought sometimes they told me they don't think I really understand of that situation. Mm-hmm. Be- they were scared. It's like so many difficulties what we had. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to go back to the format of the film because it is yeah. just uh, fascinating to me. So you said that um, after you decided that it's going to be a video game, did you write a script for it? Or what was the creative process behind putting it all together? Because there are just so many different layers and graphic design. And oh yeah, I, yeah, I imagine yeah. this was really like a thought through process. So yeah, maybe yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I lived in Hungary in the small flat, very nice one. And I had this very amazing uh, room and that was like filled with the paper notes and mm-hmm. I had huge structure on the wall. I was like from the some cheapest uh, 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 
cheapest uh, series from mm -hmm. I don't know Netflix about murder and uh, mm -hmm. I was really prepared and it was really because I really had some way I had most amazing time in my life in Hungary because everything what I need to do was just making film mm -hmm. and this luxury probably will never happen in my life because there is not enough uh, I think support financial mm -hmm. support for somebody who is making art come on in these times of course not <laughs> and never and uh, and I'm not in the position when I can really do it you know and it was really amazing I really prepared uh, every scene and I was really that was probably the most prepared project some way for me mm. and I was really and I used so many when I was amazed by some moment in the gaming what I was watching mm. and I just use it this is mm -hmm. really the work when I used so many amazing things what I saw in my film mm -hmm. really and that was really helping me I was just using the different styles because mm -hmm. I wanted to have every level because we don't have chapter in the film yeah. we have levels I wanted to use like something what is stereotypical like mm -hmm. everybody who is watching the game they just know it like I think this film can watch uh, somebody who is the who's older because like some specific things they know how is it working of course now after this when after that when we everybody playing on the mobile phones my mother is playing so much things you know mm -hmm. and that's the thing like think I just yeah it was really prepared and I used uh, everything what I saw mm -hmm. in this film and because it is uh, so sophisticated and uh, mm -hmm. thought through, did you ever think about making it into an actual video game? Was there ever? I don't have tools for that. Okay. I don't have education for that. They, I remember I had one meeting with the one producer in Czech Republic who uh, we thought we could work together and mm -hmm. he wanted to make it like, a, I don't know, a virtual, virtual reality and that stuff. But I knew I want to make film and this project I think it was very struggle for me to communicate to other people I was so into that because I lived that every day and I really couldn't like change my mind about how well I will do it you know and I never thought about that that way I thought about that yeah this is 2D uh, mm -hmm. film it's just mm -hmm. for people who are sit next to the screen mm -hmm. and just watching that you know mm -hmm. there was never I, I never thought I will put there this moment of interactive form mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I didn't want to make interactive because like their lives are not interactive it's mm -hmm. real you know for them and it was very real to for me how to show it like mm -hmm. I was really it was really my my decision which is it can be pretty like selfish some point like I am the one who will show it but yeah mm -hmm. I never thought about it mm -hmm. that way yeah um, in your film as a for me as a viewer I was getting so many uh, stimuli or inputs from exactly the graphics or the pressure of like deciding even though it was not interactive I felt mm -hmm. like I'm in the position of the player and uh, essential part of this like pressure was also the soundtrack so I wanted to ask you about how how did you collaborate with the artists or uh, what does the music in the film mean to you and if you thought of, of this aspect of creating the pressure even more on on, on the final viewer yeah I, uh, like every game has some music mostly like mm -hmm. it's very it's very yeah, it's very stereotypical what I'm saying. Every game has a music. It's not true, but uh, mm -hmm. I felt that way. It's something what uh, we need. And I was thinking, like, what we'll do, like, who will make it? It's start to be pretty long film. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's what I will do. And I start thinking about that. Why I can use just contacts what I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was thinking about who can do it. And finally, it happened, I asked for 12 artists and mm -hmm. groups who are making music. And finally, there are seven or six, I don't know, it's been a long time. And, uh, my, and I asked them because I knew they are doing 
music they love it which is very important for me mm-hmm. they know it how to do it more than me which is like very important <laughs> they can they are uh they are really empathy they can talk about emotions or they are directly talk about the society and i just yeah I just ask them Mm -hmm. and I wanted from them one minute of the music and sometimes sometimes I give them the topic of the film everybody knows the topic sometimes I give them some part of the film and they just made it they just made amazing I don't know 12 different minutes Um, it was very author music like everybody it was very personal Mm -hmm their view how to see the things and because in the uh, uh, in the game there is very important to have a reputation of the of the of the music because like you can stay in the game like if you are in i don't know i don't know what you say, in mafia check mm-hmm. very check famous game you can you can hear there's the reputation of the sound and the music and i was like yeah they don't need to do precisely the thing for this exactly scene but they just give me something and I was the dramaturgy with the sound designer Mm -hmm. and we were just putting to the different levels like when you are in the scene when they are voting there's the uh, there's the music by Jirka Libanski he was the ex-boyfriend of my best friend you know that these are Mm -hmm. normal and I know he's playing on the piano and that will be like very cheesy in some way (laughs) it's just working like there it's so emotional and I'm just really manipulating with the view like yeah if you need to be set now it's the time you know Mm -hmm. this is the time and um And it's very uh, interesting because like after like last year, this time, Mm -hmm. uh, when Corona started to be hitting pink, uh, we released the cassette of Mm -hmm. the soundtrack and every person made from one minute full song. Mm -hmm. And I can show it. Wait wait a minute, I will go for that. (laughs) Okay, sure. (laughs) And the thing is, I'm really like, when you finish the film, there is the moment when you just don't know like what I will do. It's like, it's already done. Mm -hmm. And and I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. And every time for me, there's the place where I can do so many things like merch and posters. We had amazing posters on Illusion. And after a few years, we just made this like cassette, what is like, of course, in the color of the Hungary. Uh And we made it with the cooperation with Punktum, which is like community center. And That's amazing. Yeah, and they just made, you know, and we have officially like on the deaf films, you can see the film mm-hmm. when you buy it. You, you have voucher here mm-hmm. and you have some talking about that. And the thing is the whole we made the money, we mm-hmm. are giving to the culture center in the Hungary. But the thing is, the corona came and right. everything changed. But we still have it. And of course, when you type, because it's the, the name is changing, it's illusion English, in Czech is illuse, and in Hungarian it's illusio. And the name mm-hmm. of the of the cassette is illusio. And you can buy it online, or you can you can listen on the band camp and mm-hmm. yeah it happened you know why, why did you decide to have the cassette format it's isn't it a little bit old school <laughs> oh yeah i thought it is but i think it's about you have just how to say it? i had some amazing word for that in my mind it just flew away mm. I don't know. It's uh, the thing. It's not about you are really listening that thing, mm-hmm. but I have it like at my home next oh, to yeah, yeah. you know next to next to some plants, and it looks nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I found it's very useful because I'm owner of the Škoda Fabia, which is like very old old car, and it has amazing sound in the car. Like it's the best, and it's more about you just own it. 
mm-hmm. you have some like you know you have some thing like with the uh, vinyl so many people mm-hmm. don't have the vinyl yeah. player but they are just they are just have it and it's more about like i want to support somebody mm-hmm. and it's not about just like i will send the money and i don't know what is mm-hmm. happen but you can have piece of art now yeah and that's just like yeah and because the punctum the community and culture center they are just really into the cassettes and <laughs> i was like yeah of course we can have cassettes and that was the thing yeah. <laughs> that's amazing I, i feel like i need to get one <laughs> <laughs> of course they are really cool like they're really yeah nice yeah they're <laughs> cool i will um i want to go back f- uh, to the when you were saying that uh film wise or like filmmaking wise while you were studying in Hungary you had the ideal conditions for that and mm. you could go really deep into uh, the subject matter what you wanted to uh, say with the film but um, do you remember what what can you remember about the life there like you spent a year there um, mm. was it how, how could you maybe could you contrast it with the life uh, in Czech Republic or in other countries where you lived or was it what was the hardest part of living there for me no that wasn't hard of okay. course there was the weird situation what happened to me like i had this crush with the car and police came and they were just yeah give him some money and go away like mm-hmm. what the fuck and you you can feel it like in some moments it's not happening mm-hmm. here like it's really weird you can see everywhere these billboards you know you can see like around the parliament it's just so nice mm-hmm. but everywhere in budapest it's just like it's just horrible like the whole social situation mm-hmm. with the homeless people that's just so hard like you can see like these like neo capitalism is fighting with the history of the city it's why i put there the level with the tourists mm-hmm. like yeah of course you can feel everywhere just great you can be in middle of war i think so and you can feel great you know when you just it's the yeah it's the point of the view how you are pursuing the moment mm-hmm. and what you want to really watch what you want to really see and but i'm very i'm very fragile in some way i i can see it i can see it in the social connection i i saw there so many fights on the street because people are just mad and they don't know why mm-hmm. and i saw so many weird things and of course i went with my good friends to the bar and i didn't care sometimes you know mm-hmm. you can you, you can feel it's normal you know and uh, uh, and this is the hardest thing what is normal and what is not normal and when we have um the leads uh, to tell us what is the good for us and like you could see like so many people now we are really part huge part of the of the world you know mm-hmm. i can be on the tiktok and watch the things what people are doing in the san francisco and and i feel it's normal and it's okay but still it doesn't mean when you go outside something mm. happening there what is not good like today situation you know and mm-hmm. um, we are sitting in prague in the different spaces of course yeah. or you are here no no you are <laughs> and uh, uh and i feel pretty okay because it's very nice to see you it's very nice to talk about the films and blah blah, blah and i feel good because there is some i don't know i can be here and but it doesn't mean outside are not dying people because of this state and the covid situation we are divorced on the world yeah. but i can imagine if i will play enough playstation because i started to play games after the illusion <laughs> which is like very funny last year because of the covid i bought playstation and really playing and i'm really gamer and i can feel okay with that you know mm-hmm. it's hard it's hard but if you are based in your thinking about the society culture state and mm-hmm. you have some limits mm-hmm. you can say this is wrong mm-hmm. and i'm i'm proud to say what is happening in hungary is wrong mm-hmm. and that's it 
we can mm. have some arguments why but it's very it's very it's a very white topic right um i also wanted to ask about the uh, one scene which was uh, I, i think the most powerful to me uh, where you are in the studio in the artistic studio with the people with the artists and there is the um statue of orban and you can choose the guns and and fire at him yeah. but um in the film nobody fires at, at him and i wanted to ask uh, you about this moment uh, if you remember what was it like and what was the decision if you should or shouldn't fire yeah yeah that was the yeah uh, uh the director who is talking there about his film and we can su- see the part of the film when somebody is uh, shooting to the merkels or putin or viktor orban mm-hmm. uh uh because of this scene in the film he can't make a films anymore in hungary nobody will uh, give him any money mm-hmm. uh he lost uh, uh the contract uh, with cinemas he can't show it he can show it just like in the very underground places mm-hmm. and um it's why i made it Mm-hmm. like because i felt there is the because what does it even mean like it was part of the film who is like funny anarchist film yeah. like dula is very good friend of me by my my own he was studying it's very funny he was studying the same department in the fam too in prague mm-hmm. you know it's why i found him very mm-hmm. funny it's happening and <laughs> i was like yeah let's do it let's be very clear about that because you want it like what do you will do like shoot him mm-hmm. this is so cliche because the whole illusion the whole film it's mm-hmm. come on cliche it's ending with the hungarian team like what the fuck you know it's very cliche and i really like this like well, let's do it and yeah. hungarian color and there was the moment just do it just just do like the same mm-hmm. in the film will they shut us because of this Mm-hmm. And that was very interesting. Everybody were just so scared. Like, are you filming that? No, you don't have identity there, but you can find it. Like, if you want it, you will know who is who are these guys. Mm-hmm. But very, it was very interesting moment because of the people who were like, uh, they give us these guns. That was just like they thought they will be part of the film, and they didn't care what, what we will do. Mm-hmm. And of course, when they saw the moment, we have these like statue by the different artists, and we want to shoot on the statue. Mm-hmm. And these guns, they weren't real; they were just film, mm-hmm. you know, props, things, yeah. props. And and after the filming, they sent us the email. They were. Uh, how is it in english sorry uh bla- they were blackmailing us mm-hmm. they want to shoot it down because mm-hmm. they found they were scared yeah and i remember i was like oh my god we need to put this scene away but nothing is really happening there there is just moment when you feel this is too much you want it or what mm-hmm. we'll do like we will shoot him mm-hmm. because it's normal with we are saying you know some about some politic like it's mm-hmm. too much we need to shoot him like what the are we in 17th century or what the fuck you know but <laughs> the thing is i was really scared i was yeah. really i thought i will uh i just can't handle it because i felt i'm doing something wrong mm-hmm. i felt it and i remember i came to the school and there was the one guy from the production department and he was like katerina calm down it's they want to do it but we have laws and right. they can't do it in Czech mm. Republic right you have did you did you show their identity there no mm-hmm. it's just props problem solved problem right. solved but sometimes you feel like oh I can't do it like mm-hmm. there's more the out like self uh censorship than the than the mm-hmm. real censorship and mm-hmm. I think it's I just felt the system it's the fear. that moment mm-hmm. you know It's mm-hmm. not official threat. It's why it's uh, the Hungarian system is really still it's still going on because mm-hmm. 
so many times it's not about the official threat, but it's about the auto censorship. And I think uh, this is how these systems works. Mm -hmm. uh, this non-democratic system, they are just making these like, you know, these moments like when you feel you are doing something wrong, but we didn't do anything yeah. wrong. Like I can film, I'm just doing, I will kill somebody. It's a film, you know? Yeah. And you are watching the film, it looks like a video game. Like, come on, <laughs> what is your problem? You know, mm -hmm. right? Because they already they already shut down the film, what wasn't real, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. It was like future film with the actors, and that was problem too. They felt it's threatening. And mm -hmm. come on, right. Um, I remember that after you released the film that uh, you had you had some struggles with releasing it actually in Hungary or to showing it uh, to Hungarian audience. So I wanted to follow up on that. Did you did you succeed to show it uh, to Hungarian audience? And what was the reaction back in 2018? Yeah, um, the first reaction from the Hungary was when I made uh, the uh, I met inter I made interview with the uh, variety on the on the film festival in Ihlava mm -hmm. and there was the moment when I said to the, uh, the the man who was making this interview I said something uh, of the record and he put it in the interview oh, and wow. oh, it was like yeah it was very hard for me because it was my like bigger first moment when mm. I was talking with somebody who was important from the very important media and uh, it was about the situation they were they were blackmailing, blackmailing us this company mm -hmm. and uh, and I saw it in uh, some Hungarian medias it was pretty popular mm -hmm. and of course that was the sorry uh, uh, it was very hard because it was the first time when I read about myself horrible things on the internet and it was the first moment I was like okay I can't do it <laughs> right. and after that uh, our festival department on FAMU they had uh, they were in contact with so many festivals around the Hungary and uh, we had some some messages from them like wow this is really interesting for us but we can't do it because we are scared mm -hmm. we are scared mm -hmm. of losing the fundings we are scared because they already have this situation already we saw it in Jula's film they shut it down more about this like non loudly say censorship Mm -hmm. And that's very hard for the festivals. And yeah, and we didn't make it. Uh, after that, we had this connection with the how we are now with the Czech centers. There is the Hungarian center in Prague and we wanted to show it there. Mm -hmm. And they were really happy about to show it. And one day somebody wrote them from the foreign minister from the Hungary because they are under the foreign minister, like Czech center us mm -hmm. under the uh, Czech uh, foreign minister and from the Hungary they told them they can't show it and we couldn't really do it to the official way mm -hmm. and it's why after because like when you know it because you are from the art community film community yeah. but uh, for the normal people living normal life uh, if you are uh, in the time when you are uh, trying to be with your film on the festivals, mm -hmm. you can't just show it like that. You know, right. you can't show it first in the underground cinema or some club before it's on the festival. It's huge politics and mm -hmm. really tired about that. It's why it never really happened to be in Hungary because it's, we made it with this, we thought we will make it with this cassette. Mm -hmm. We will go, we, will, right. we, we, re we wanted to release it first in Czech Republic with the 
uh, artists who are on the cassette. Mm -hmm. And after this, we want to bring some Czech artists who are on the cassette to Hungary, mm -hmm. to the Budapest, to some places, show the film. Uh, they can buy the cassette and they can already uh, help uh, to the culture right. and community center in Budapest. And that was the huge plan and never happened. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this pandemic will end and you will get the chance to still I don't do know. it. <laughs> I think now for them they will be like they watch the film and we're like yeah now it's worse. <laughs> it's more like right. it's uh, it's why the film it's some kind of problematic because it's really like uh, catching just one ear you know mm -hmm. ear mm -hmm. and it's still changing. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I can see so many things in Czech Republic. It's pretty same like in the in the <laughs> film, you know. And it's like right. So do you do you follow the situation uh, in Hungary now? Do you think that you would like to maybe make a, another documentary about it or oh God, never ending documentary about the Hungary? <laughs> um, yeah, of course. I I had this like research day before this uh, interview with you and. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, what is happening with Hungary in last few months? Because now we are more like, truly, I'm more uh, focused about how I can feel good in this pandemic year. Because for me, it's very hard to not going outside, meeting my friends, meeting other people. Come on, yeah. going to the library never happened for the last one year. And uh, it's why I'm really trying to focus myself. But uh I made it. I, I made one year, uh, one day. I was just checking what is happening mm -hmm. now in the Hungary, and I just checked the news. What happened last week, and mm -hmm. I already was like super depressed mm -hmm. because it's like so many things going on. It's happening every day. Something what you can't really imagine. It's happening in the European state, who is part of the European Union, and like, like, come on, like, <laughs> it's too much. But of course, I saw so many news because I'm still trying to watch news around the world, not just about the pandemic, because I'm a normal person. I still want to be connected with the reality. But yeah, it's too much. It's like I can really choose what is worse. Like, it's just too much. They destroy the school. They destroy so many topics who you really can't talk about that in the schools, in the, every school in the whole Hungary. Um, now the whole situation with the Sputnik and the Chinese vaccines is just like super crazy. Mm. Like, wow, it's, now they are not part officially of the uh, People's Party in European Union and they just find a way how to delay the problems with the European unions and like like everybody who I know from Hungary, they are just like super tired. They really changed their life because they just couldn't handle it anymore or just they went away. And it's really hard. Like the whole intelligence groups who have this education to help the society in the Hungary, they just went away and it's just super hard and uh, it's really hard because they, they really need to help themselves and it's really hard when you are um you are you are growing in the society when it's everything is so weird and you don't have true and yeah right. yeah i'm trying to watch but it's very hard it's like what i will watch first like ukraine it's still happening the war there you know like covid is everywhere in the poland they, they can't have like abortion and it's like it's everywhere is happening and i'm not even talking about the africa continent or like you know right yeah. it's not my topic anymore but it doesn't mean i'm not caring about other people right <laughs> so I have uh, one last question. What are you working on uh, at the moment or what, what topic are you going to focus on next? Right. Um, <laughs> like uh, my main focus is now how to live through the COVID pandemic like a person. <laughs> uh, but if you are talking about <laughs> my film, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I stop it now for the while, like to work on the film because it's very hard for me because like my work is really specific. 
it's going through to me it's mm -hmm. going through the uh, social contact and uh, I really don't want to make documentary films if I am really not in contact with the reality which is like not happening so much we are everybody doing a reality in our houses and places and we just gone now we just can't travel from Prague it's abundant and it's like really hard for me and it's why I stopped it for a while because it was just overwhelming for me this pressure and why I just stop it for the while because the whole topic is about the manipulation in the relationships if you don't have people who you can watch who you can speak with without using this amazing zoom calls or skype calls or meet calls or what i forgot what we, what we are or, or or messenger calls like it's really hard for me it's like yeah yeah I'm trying to not manipulate with myself now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, but I hope so. It will be better. I hope so. I will have more energy and I hope so. I will be back because I'm not the person like working every day because I wanted uh, that I was that person. But I think last two years in my life really changed the perspective of the be director of the documentary film and because i'm not living from the documentary films i'm living from the teaching mm. um, amazing people on the high school it means like i really don't need to do it every day it's not for the living i really find the way how to make documentary films it's making because i like it mm -hmm. and uh, now i really don't like it mm -hmm. because it's more pressure than to love and because yeah. I have really hard topic, I just can't make it into a hard situation because yeah. I could make uh, very hard decisions and I'm mm -hmm. still working with the living humans and uh, we need to care about them. And first of all, I need to care about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a very good tip for everyone, I think. Uh, so oh, yeah, <laughs> very hard one because world is still going yes. you need to still make some money and you still need to feel good and everything every ple pleasure what was for me just like live in the city mm -hmm. come on like call to world no this is not the pleasure you know? <laughs> no definitely yeah so I would like to thank you so much. Uh, this is uh, this is all the time we have. Um, and I would like to wish you good luck with all your upcoming projects. Thank you to the viewers uh, for watching this. I would encourage you once again to watch Illusion. And uh, I will see you on uh, in another interview. And uh, thank you so much, Katerina, for today. Thank you so much. I hope uh, you enjoyed the film. And still, what I need to say, it's not dogma like you can think everything what you need just be aware what is happening it doesn't mean you will be against of the COVID, but uh, yeah be good thank you thank you bye